Morgan. And we're covering for Mr. Peter Fields. Richard. Uh, I'm sorry, Richard Fields and John Cameron. They're away. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and welcome to 2018. So on our show, we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to talk about stuff, libertarian stuff, and things of our opinion. Gail was a state officer. He's been a libertarian. How long have you been a libertarian? Most of my life. No kidding. Oh. But I didn't get registered with the party until about uh, 2000. Yeah, but you became interested in politics all the way back in the 60s, right? Yeah. And how government ran. And, yeah. And, uh, and that's, man, that's, that's when great. I first adopted the philosophy. So beyond our meanderings around uh, and doing this, I got a copy of the party platform. Those of you who don't know what it is, it's a list of things that we say that we believe in. If someone says, well, what do you believe in? Well, we've got a list of them here. And I've given, in earlier episodes, I gave you a few of them. We talked about them. Uh, let's see. There's one in here that's really pertinent right now. I don't have it in front of me, but I want to talk about it anyway. And that's recreational drugs. The Libertarian Party, if I got it right, believe that anybody has the right to put anything they want to in their body so long as it doesn't impact the rights of others. Why not? That's a why not. Like, I agree with you, why not? Why not? So Why, why, should, why should we tell people you can't smoke? You can't, um, you can't eat sugar? You can't eat fat? You, yeah. Or, or any other substance? Well, the part I don't like is why do they put, make a law about it? Uh, just Monday, California became uh, a state with legal recreational marijuana. Today, our Attorney General Jeff Sessions says, well, we're not quite sure we're going to want that, that uh, marijuana around to be legal because it's scary stuff, and I think it's just as bad as air run. Would you like some financial advice? Sure. <laughs> because today lends the perfect opportunity for investors. If you're interested in investing in recreational or medical marijuana, today is the perfect day or first thing in the morning, because stocks plummeted That's because of that announcement. Right. That's right. And if you right. jump in now at the bottom, the yes. price is going to go back up. I just saw 64% of Americans now support the idea of legalizing marijuana. And, uh, and it's 26 states. How many more states do we have to have before Congress will finally take it off? 34 is, I believe, the magic number. Before they'll take it off, the uh, controlled substances list? 34 states can um, create a referendum. To overturn to, a federal law? Yes. Well, let's get some more states going. Let's get ready to rumble and get it done. And, and the libertarians, we believe that if you want to shoot up heroin on your own dime and in your own, the privacy of your own home, knock yourself out. Okay. I detest that people so easily smoke tobacco, smoke marijuana, inject their veins with chemicals, throw um, chemicals down their throat, but I defend their right to do it. I wish they wouldn't. It's not good for them. It's bad. It well, did, does crazy things to you. Did you know that but, less than 20% of Americans use any kind of recreational drugs? And 10% of those, are, or 10% of the population is addicted. But... 10% is only 35. 10% is addicted? I don't think it's that high. Population. I don't think it's that high. I think it's lower, but it's higher than what people would think. Uh, there's only 375 to, tweakers, 375,000 tweakers. We're going to include all drugs in that number. Oh, oh if you're going to include nicotine and, and it, it's much alcohol. Let, let me, let's, let's exclude nicotine. But we can leave alcohol in there. Yeah. Um, we probably should include nicotine, except the studies didn't do that. Yeah, but if we're just going to try to be have some clean data and, and keep everything that... What percent of Americans are addicted to some drug, legal or illegal? I mean, right now... 10%. I think it's a little higher than that, maybe, because of the OxyContin thing right now, don't you? It, it fluctuates a little bit here did, and there. Did you, know that, you know what happens if, if you use too much of this stuff? It'll kill you. You. Fall, you fall out of the database. Oh, you can only have it just a little bit, and then we'll keep you in. Otherwise, we're going to throw you no, out. No, no. If you take too much of it, oh. you drop out of the human race. I, I uh, And then, then, then you're no longer data. 
Uh, I hope the, I don't know if you're aware of it, boys and girls, but we have uh, Access Sacramento, a uh, radio station, KUBU, and I host a radio a radio program called Cannabis Cafe, and we spend a lot of our times discussing news and information related to uh, the cannabis right now. What we're trying to do is get this cannabis thing bedded down smoothly and quietly. And in preparing for the show and studying the statistics, I was surprised how few people do uh, illegal drugs. Uh, it's like 1.7% or 0.7% do heroin. The biggest one now is marijuana. And now that we're at 26 states, it's 15%. And it's going to climb a little bit. Of course, what's number one? Fifty-six percent for alcohol. <laughs> and you know, if, if I'm driving down the street and I come up to an intersection and there's somebody coming from the other way and they're coming towards me and they're thinking about turning left and they got to be impaired either by alcohol or marijuana. Something. I hope it's marijuana, not alcohol. Because if it's alcohol, they're going to think they can make it. Well, the Never reason, the, the big reason why I want to see drugs legalized is, first of all, the numbers aren't that big. There aren't that many people that use that stuff. The, and it also helped me understand why there is such a backlash against it. Why do so many people say, I don't understand why you smoke that stuff. I don't understand why you want to inject yourself with that stuff. It makes no sense to me. I well. Don't. But it's 80% don't do it. Yeah. 85% have nothing to do with it. And so the, the 40%. The real, the real challenge that I have with most of the drug laws is called asset forfeiture. Oh, yes. That means the cops have a right to take your stuff, even if they suspect you're in the drug business or in the drug game. And so. And that includes houses, cars, bank accounts. Many of our police officers, the NARC division especially, is all geared up just to handle the drug addiction problem that they see as the big problem, the, the scourge of the world. And really, if you turn this back like it was in, in the years earlier in this country, uh, if you were addicted, that, that was, you go see the doctor. And the doctor could either prescribe you an, enough, wean you off of it if you wanted, or keep prescribing it to you in a and it was clean. It was not. It was not. Uh, didn't have junk in it. Uh, the purity level on the street is sometimes horrendous. Um, and I, I live out in the Arden Arcade area, and you see, <coughs> every once in a while, there's a, a bad batch. You can tell because of the way stuff is strewn around on the streets. The, it just affects people in, in an adverse way. And you know what happened was the. The mix was off. They got something wrong. That's why we and need to legalize it. It made them crazy. That, and, that, and that's why we need to legalize it because they're doing well, it that. It legal and they purchased it through. Uh, uh, they're still purchasing uh, it on the black market. Yeah. And the problem is it needs to come from. So, so the and question. Somebody cooked it up wrong. The question I get asked is, well, wait a minute. If you want to legalize drugs, exactly how is that going to work? Because what I want to do is I want to take recreational drugs out of the hand of the law enforcement, criminal justice, and prison system and put it in the hands of the public health hospitals and doctors. So if you want to... I shy away from the word public health. Well, the health, but, yeah, yeah, but the health system. Sure. I want it handled. That includes mental health, the physical health, because I think uh, there's, there's a, uh, a clinic in, in Vancouver that allows you to come in. They, they don't sell the heroin, but you can bring in the heroin from outside and you can do it there. Uh, two years ago, they had 476 overdoses, zero deaths. Before that, they had 600 overdoses and 300 deaths. Now they got none. The problem is, and the only reason they still have so many overdoses, is because they don't take their, sh their stuff, they don't test it to see its strength and be able to say, okay, you weigh 200 pounds, you should do this much of a dose. They don't do it that way. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to create a drug spa where you can go get, you want to go use some heroin for the afternoon. You go in there, you give them your little medical certificate where the doctor said that you're medically cleared to do this. And then you go into the little room, you lay down, they strap on a blood pressure cuff, they hook up your little IV, they put on your little headsets and your little video phones, and they inject you with your heroin. And you're there and it's a nice cool room and it's quiet and everything. There's a nurse on duty, there's a paramedic on duty, they walk around, make sure everybody's cool. You're on a monitor. You can do your heroin, and then you come off of it, and you get up and go home, have a sandwich, and go home. 
Oh, and it cost eight dollars to do that. That's pretty low price. But because we don't want them going to the black market. But the government takes care of that. So the government would be the contractor, just like the government got all the excise tax for alcohol. I don't know what we're going to do about methamphetamine, but I did think of an idea of, so we give all the tweakers their methamphetamine, then we put them on one of those little, uh, have you guys seen it around the city? It's a bar bike where it has like 10 places in a circle where you can pedal it around. So we put the tweakers on the bar bike, and then we take them to a bouncy house where they can jump around in the bouncy house or go to the water park and grow, grow, go in the water park. Give them something productive to do. That was, I was thinking, Habitat for Humanities. They could probably build 10 houses in a day or be tweaked like that. But, but methamphetamine is, is the most dangerous of the bunch. In hospital stays, it's the number one drug that gets people in the emergency room more than any other. And you know what the lowest drug is? It's not marijuana, it's psilocybin. Uh, the state of the state legislature is talking about legalizing psilocybin, magic mushrooms. The the VA is already wanting to experiment with it. Hmm. The the uh, American Legion, eighty two percent of Legion members want medical marijuana legalized, and they want it taken off the controlled Schedule One list, and they want more studies done on it to show that more benefits can be obtained from it. This is the American Legion. Yeah, you know, there's there's a uh political activist here in Sacramento who is focusing on marijuana, not for the sake of marijuana, but for the sake of hemp. Because of, of the versatility the ban, of the plant, what you can do with it. Because of the ban on marijuana, we don't we can't manufacture hemp clothing or hemp ropes. Well I was thinking of paper in, products because we cut down so many trees to make paper products we wouldn't And the fiber is longer in it. And hemp. the fiber is stronger. The fiber is damn near as strong as silk. I, I don't know that. I Damn know near that as stand, strong. But. Or, or I don't mean silk, I mean nylon. Okay. Like parachute cord. So near. And, and, uh, but I was always, when I was a kid, yeah. a good rope was a hemp rope. Yeah. You, you knew it, that. Isn't that what the cowboys and used? The lasso was a hemp rope. They didn't have nylon ropes back then. No, uh, but before that, I think they used rawhide is what they used, but that amp was great. And, and there was this rope that hung from the ceiling of the gymnasium down to the floor no, with I a hated, knot in it. I hated that rope. <laughs> and that was hemp. I hated that rope. It never broke. No, it never, it never broke, but I couldn't get my ass out of it. So we spent $1 trillion. How can you not the, at least make it one foot up, that rope? Well, I got two feet up. Okay. But now the rope that had knots every foot, it was easier to do it. Oh, yeah. But some, I hated those little kids that just go up and down like monkeys, man. They just went yeah, down. Yeah, I wouldn't lose them. So America spent $1 trillion in the war on drugs. Sessions says he still wants to wage war on it. 64% of Americans want it, marijuana completely legalized. And then let's go on to the rest of the recreational drugs and get those legalized. Because we've, we've realized that for some reason humans, a certain segment of humans enjoy using intoxicating substances recreationally. So it's not according to the libertarians, it's not our right to deny them. But we don't want them breaking into people's houses and stealing stuff so they can get their fix. We don't want them running in front of cars and getting hit by a car and tearing up the car. We want to preserve the rights of the user and the non-user. What I would like to do is especially for those that live on the street, the homeless people, especially the ones that don't want to do anything that are addicted, we can round those guys up. We got a, a military base that we can put them at and we can treat them together and, and give them the mental health training. You're starting to sound like a Republican. Well, but we would use the money that we gleaned from uh, the, sale of the, uh, of the sale of the drugs. So we could actually turn that into a profit. The CIA has been traded, you know, in the drug business for years. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, and, and I would like to see that happen. So you can have more than one wife. You can have a joint. Uh, do you think that, uh, that that thing with that with Sessions and Trump, you think something's actually going to happen with that? Think he's actually going to shut somebody down? I don't know how far they're going to go. Because the states are already whining. Well, Colorado's but, got $400 million they've made so but far. But really what happens is Sessions appoints the... DEA. The... the District attorneys. Oh, the U.S. The US attorneys. attorneys. Yeah. <coughs> and he's already picked a bunch of people that agree with him, got them appointed. So there is a chance that we'll go down that path. 
Man, oh man. You had like 14, 15. Uh, what, whatever board. happened, isn't there anything in this platform about the government <coughs> must respond to the will of the people? 64%, that's two points short of a supermajority. What do you need? 66% to have a clear majority, right? Supermajority. Yeah. Well, which, which is the highest majority you can have, 66%. And, oh man, I'm telling you, Gail, it bothers me. All right. Go ahead. You live in California, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a wacky you should be You should be totally used to the government running everything. Yeah, it, it, it bothers me a lot. I, I have woken up um, practically in tears over the lack of liberties that we have that we used to enjoy. Like no seat belts. Like riding not, in the back of a pickup truck. Right, riding in the back of a pickup truck and not down in the bed, sitting up on the edge of the pickup truck. You know, when I was a little even even sitting in the bed. You know what the restraint? You anymore. know what the restraint system was when my mom had her 1950 50 Ford Studebaker. Uh, I would stand here next to her, uh, stand on the seat so I could see out. And she's driving down the road. She'd hit the brake and go like that. <laughs> And I saw somebody do that. <laughs> Instinctively hit the brake. And yeah, yeah, I yeah. I went, wow, it's been a while since I saw that. Oh, but that's obviously somebody who had, who has who uh, had unrestrained people in their vehicle. Let's uh, shift gears with the uh, on this discussion of Libertarian Party and their platform. Again, the platform is a list of things that they commonly believe, and every state has their own platform. Each state. Do you have to take this and... Cut this up, or you can start with a blank piece of paper. You may. And uh, Nevada, a few years ago, said, oh, this is getting too crazy. And they start all over, and, and they put it on just a couple pages. That's what I was thinking. And this this doesn't. I think California, with their it's gotta be 20 to 40 pages of platform. And this and this is the national, and this is eight pages. Now, now, And does the platform of the state of California have some of the same things in it? Yes. Do they have some things that they just wrote a lot more words to say the same thing? This was short. They have a lot more things in there. <laughs> For example, do you know something that's not in here that's in there? Yes. What? Um, a few years ago, in, in I'm going to say it was in 2009, and there's a crazy reason why I remember that. Um, uh, because I lost a, a race for state party office on the first vote because I wanted to do a, I wanted to follow libertarian philosophy and not put something in the platform and somebody else wanted to put in there that the Libertarian Party of California supports and encourages gay marriage. Okay. I'm going, but it should be get the government out of it. Oh, right, right, right. And that's what's in here. The government doesn't belong in that gay marriage business. But California's put that in in 2009. Okay. And because of that, I became the state party secretary and the state party treasurer. I would have been the treasurer. I lost by one vote to Brian Darby because somebody got up and complained about my taking that stance, except they colored it in favor because they were the main proponent of getting that added to the platform. But they're missing the point of pure libertarianism. Oh, yes. Yes, they're missing. I did it. not con con I, I did not say that person is 100% libertarian. I did not. I, I've never been guilty of saying that. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are a number of people who get involved in the party that are not, you know, and, and I can be accused, and I'm sure I, I'm, I'm guilty of. I'm more libertarian than you are, but and that's that's one of the problems we have is, is but I've never been one to kick people out because they're not. And that's the challenge that, that we've had with, with some people who get, um, they want to argue philosophy and I'm more libertarian than, and, and that's all well and good, but you don't use that to push anybody out. You only use that to encourage more people. Well, and, and if I remember right, the full spectrum of libertarianism, if you're a 100% stone cold libertarian and that's all you live, eat, and breathe, then you're an anarchist. There'd be no government. You no. would have absolutely no government. Not true. Really? 
not true. So what does a 100% a stone-cold libertarian look like? Somebody who believes the Constitution as it's written. Oh, I, well, then what do you call the guy that wants no government? An anarchist. An anarchist. He's not a libertarian. No, he's an anarchist. And, and I'll grant you, there are anarchists in the Libertarian Party. But we need those guys to round out the political spectrum a little bit, just like we need Star Child to yeah. run around in his little shorty shorts. <laughs> I, you know, to each his own. Yeah, but... but you, can, uh, you can wear whatever you want to when you go to the state convention. Yeah, well... <laughs> I will not get in the way. Yeah. I'm going to dress like a businessman when I go there. So what do we have? We have a few more minutes of time. I got a qu some questions for you, Gail. What do you think we can do to get the Libertarian Party mainstream, to get Mr. and Mrs. America to look at our party seriously and really consider joining? Time. Time. But we've already had 40 years. Yeah. But we're getting closer. We had the greatest following. Uh, we've had the more Gary Johnson got more votes than any other presidential candidate has ever got, and he got nine percent. We in some parts of the country, some parts of the state. Yeah, but I thought the national Nation, vote was nine. I thought nationally he got nine percent, almost four percent. Oh, four percent. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I thought he got nine. In some states he did better. In some states he yeah, of course, of course, of course, well. of course. Time. Well, what about? Because Education, we're, educating people we're on libertarianism. Being, we're appearing more mainstream than we ever have before. And the party is growing. And right now, the numbers in the Democrat Party and the numbers in the Republican Party are shrinking. We hold, we hold the, the flag, if you will, for a growing party in, in an atmosphere of declining parties. Do you, is there anything that... Uh... If you just had a broom and a dustpan and you could clean something up in the party, what would you? What would that be? Just to make it run smoother. Uh, egos. If we get rid of egos. <laughs> that is the biggest hindrance to progress we have. <laughs> I noticed that. I noticed that. <laughs> and it seems to be that Libertarian Party would not draw those kind of people. They would draw more down to earth. But there are some people who can't make it in the Republican Party or can't make it in the Democrat Party, and their ego demands that they be able to have some control. And so they join our party because they get more of that control because the party's smaller. Oh, I see. I see. So they're not in it for the benefit of the greater good of our citizens, they're in it for themselves. I believe so, yes. Oh man. Well Now, we we must say, I know we got about eight, seven minutes left. I, we must say that I am not a current officer of the state party. Yeah, but you've been. I have been in the yeah, past. Yeah, and you're in between therefore, jobs. There, I am. Uh, you might go back, right? You might run again. Who knows? But because I'm not a member, because I am not an officer of the state party right now, I cannot be a spokesman for them. So anything I've said is so Gail Morgan, Libertarian Party member. Well, that's the same thing. I am not an office holder in the county of Sacramento. I can't speak for the county, but I can speak for me as a party member. I'm actually a, a member of the Yolo County Party. Oh, then you can, but you can't, well, but, you can only speak as a I'm member. Not, but, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, and, and, and really, I'm not, a, I'm not currently in a leadership position, so I cannot speak for the party at all. I, I've, I've really backed off because I put in 10 hard years 10 easy years, but in 10 years of, of being very active, very, very uh, putting my influence out there, helping grow the party, getting us into the state capital, um, taking a stagnant growth yeah. to a growing uh, party registration in the state of California. And then uh, there were some changes. Um, I felt a little bit burned out, so I stepped aside. Uh, yep. And... I'm taking a breather. I don't know if I'm going to go back or not, but I feel more relaxed now. For but sure. you'll still be a libertarian. I, you can't take that out of me. That's what I'm saying. I am, well, I am, I am libertarian before there was a libertarian party. I, I left the uh, as the uh, I left the libertarian party of Sacramento County because of egos. Really? I, yeah, I didn't need it. I didn't need that kind of aggravation, and I was a little taken back by it. Like, wow, this is strange. I mean, Tony, you need to draw in your ego. 
I'm telling you, man. I, you know, it, there's no. I, I can do something better with my time if I wanted to play with my ego and get better strokes than being in the party. I wanted to do this because I was tired of seeing my government wasting my money. I was tired of seeing my government getting in the middle of things that they have no business being involved in. If I don't want to wear a helmet on my motorcycle or a seatbelt, speed limits. Well, the reason why we have speed limits is because uh, uh, so many people die. Okay, so if we make the speed limit 55 instead of 65, less people will die. Yes. But if we make it 85, more people will die. Yes. The but if we make be reported oh, wait a minute. If we make this it, week. If we make it 25 miles an hour on our freeways, we could save a whole lot of people and then have more helmets. Sacramento will be <laughs> reported this week. Prosperity is killing people. <laughs> you, you laugh. <laughs> they said because more people are working, more people get killed on the highways. <laughs> statistics. You can prove anything no, with statistics. I, I, and, and you're probably right. We, we got about two minutes. Yeah. I think I can say this. Uh, about 25, 30 years ago, they did a study of Yale and Hamilton. At the time, one was a men's college, the other was a women's college. Graduates of Yale had an average of 3.4 children. Graduates of Hamilton, the women's college, had an average of 2.8 children. Proof that men have more children than women. <laughs> so the, the B has reported that more people die on the highways because more people are working. Prosperity is killing us. That is absolutely crazy. I really hope, Gail, that we can uh, get the get some fire under the Libertarian Party leadership and its members to expand it. I think I think if if Americans knew just what the party was all about, I think they'd be more inclined to support it. I would like this, and I'd really like to see us now. I, I don't know what's going to happen in 2020. Trump is either going to get reelected or he's not. And 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 what I did with Trump was this. I I you said about 30 seconds. I said that I'm going to give him a year. And if I if he gets a year then I'm going to go to midterm. So he gets his year, I'll give him till the midterm and see what happens. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint. Yeah, we enjoyed being with you. Normally I'm in there helping put this show on the air. Tonight. And I sit next to him in there too. They actually let us out to talk to you guys. What are the air times for our show, do you know? We're on at 8 o'clock every Thursday. And then we're on again at Friday at 4 a.m. and midnight on Saturday or something. I don't know exactly. And we're on YouTube and on Facebook. And uh, always good to, to watch the Libertarian Counterpoint no matter where you find us. And we'll Thank be glad you. to see you after, and you'll get to have your old guys back again. So you don't have to listen to us messing up their beautiful show. See you later, guys. <laughs>